world and now I'm living And the good just gets better, keeps on giving Not even close to the end, it's just beginning Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah And if the good, I won't even worry anymore Took all my cares, still can kick them all out the door Go on a try, come and tell me what you're waiting for Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Do you know what they say, there's nothing new in angling. But quite recently, I went down a little short beach fishing trip with Mike down on the south coast, a place called Limington Wall, which I've never been to in my life before. And we went into a local tackle shop down there and gentleman behind the tackle counter gave us a little tip which I will be using again. It concerns the use of, and it catches fish because we've used it and we've seen the film. Ah. But you've got to watch the film to find out what this vital piece of equipment is that Graham and Mike have been so impressed with. Wait till you see it. It's so simple. It's ridiculous. Why didn't I think of it? Okay, so today you're going to be fishing on Limited Seawall. Um, it's quite shallow because it's just on the outside of an estuary basically. So we would recommend using flat leads like so rather than the traditional type of the torpedo so it doesn't bury into the mud. Um, if I just go through a, a, a brief rig that you need. A two up one down would be pretty good um, with size one hooks as well basically uh, you know because you're targeting flounders and things you don't want the, the hook to bury in the fish um, two up one down so something like that that make sure you've got some hard on the bottom and some further up as well where it's shallow though obviously in estuaries you get a lot of crabs so we recommend also using pop-up beads like that white one or a smaller one. Some glow in the dark, different colours, but what this will do if you put it onto your snood by your hook there, that will lift the bait up and stop the crabs getting the bait so quickly. Okay to explain a bit more about these rigs that we sell in the shop here, um, this is the, the business end of the snood basically, or the hook link. It's been tied with amnesia, uh, 15 pound which is more than enough for what you're doing today. You've got a stop knot which is a piece of silicon tubing this grips the line um, and allows basically stops the bait going up further away from the hook. It is adjustable as well, so depending on the size of the bait, you can move it. Also, have a sequin on there. This goes up to the stop knot, but also stops any worms or anything pushing over that over that knot. So basically, it just cushions cushions it and protects that stop knot and makes it work properly. We've also got an Aberdeen style hook. Camazan B940, um, most probably widely used hook in, in sea fishing. Shape is nice for hooking worms as well and um, nice and sharp point. If you were to put the bead on like we said before, you ideally want it in this sort of area and that again will push up to the stop knot, like so with the sequin. Okay, Just to explain a bit more about the lead, this is the uh, basic breakaway flatty impact lead. The main reason we picked this one today is for the shape, so when it hits the water it will flutter down and won't bury into the mud. This bit here is an impact shield which is designed to clip your bait up for when you're distance casting but you still need it to be flat. We're not going to be using this aspect today but just to show how it works, once you bait up the hook, place, place it like so, the water will hit, hit the lead and push the cone up, pushing the hook off. Like so. Okay, so to explain this part of the rig, this line here is the rig body. It's tied with 60 pound shock leader. This is so you can, if you ever need to, you can cast heavy leads on it without having the rig snap on you. We've got a crimp swivel here. Basically, this is crimped on the rig body, so it's not damaging the line because you're not going too tight, and it holds it in place, so it's always fixed. To a swivel, to your snood line, this bit of rubber here is anti-tangle, so it just helps the rig from stopping it twist up on itself as you're casting out and reeling in. Just that little bit there just helps no end. The bait we're going to be using today is ragworm, very popular off of the Limington seawall that you're going to today. So if I show you these, these are your ragworm. So you've possibly might have seen these before. The way they hook them on is through their mouth, all the way through the worm come out somewhere near the tail. You can quite happily leave a tail end. If you leave too much it will fly off in the cast though. 
Um, also don't be afraid to put more than one on the hook where these ones are quite small you can put two or three on, on one, one hook at a time just one after the other and that way it presents a nice little bait and nice action as well, a nice bit of movement in the water to entice the flounders or any other fish. It's a big sort of seagrass and marshy area. I don't know actually whether it's encroaching because of, uh, you know, like a land reclamation that's, you know, through nature, but it's a big area. And over in the distance, you can see the mainland is the Isle of Wight. And there are those big rocks. For those who don't know, the most world famous needles. One of the best cod fishing places in the winter and somewhere I never seem to get to fish. The actual wall is, I guess, there to stop natural erosion on somewhere like Lymington. So even though it's very windy, we could get down on the slope there and at least get a bait out as far as we could. Yeah, fish on. It's live. On it. Oh, there's a bead. I see the bead. I don't think it's huge. I don't know got way around this line. There's nothing on. There's a bead, mate. There's, no, there's a fish. It's tiny, but there it oh is. Oh my god! Hey, the PB smallest fish. What can is we, it? Can, bass? We, can, we, can bass? we see it in the lens? Baby bass. Yeah, little bass, isn't it? Yeah. Tiny bass. That's a that is a PB anyway. That is. That, it's, it's nice to actually catch something though, but. And where's you know that what? bead? That's worked, yeah, that's worked on Gary's tips for that bead there, look. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm laughing at. <laughs> Gary's lead. Gary's lead. <laughs> look at that lead. It's a piece of coiled up that's lead piping. <laughs> homemade special from Gary. Who Pullen. could have possibly tied that on with that rig like this <laughs> and a piece of 150 pound mono? The only thing is, the bead definitely worked though, didn't it? Because my other, my other rod I brought in and it was stripped. Uh, so the crabs had it and Gary was saying about the crabs. We've got a really mild winter at the moment. We're kind of middle of December temperatures are in a double figure still so it's ridiculous yeah. let's get that so the, back. the crabs are very active but great fish oh it's a start it's and i'll tell you what the bead works the bead definitely works and it's nicely hooked and so does that lead pipe and i can give it back to the lady and her plumber later on yeah <laughs> the main reason we were fishing at Livingston wall was because it's very sheltered there it doesn't look it but the wind was howling off our backs and that would have put big waves into our face on the main beach so we just figured on a last minute hunch that we go down somewhere sheltered, made a phone call, and looks like it's paid off for Mike here anyway. He's certainly hooked into something. But it's a wall that has different shapes, and I should think that providing you get the wind off your back, there's nearly always somewhere you can fish. And here he comes. Yes, he's beaten his poor old dad already. Well, there we go, another small bass. Uh, this is about 40 minutes after the other one I've just had. As you can see, the bait's still completely intact, uh, and it's on that thanks to that pop-up bead, really, which is an absolutely awesome idea, especially at the moment where the bottom baits are being plagued by crabs and they're being stripped. So, guys, if you're out there beach fishing and you're getting problems with crabs, I'd start trying to fish with these pop-up bead things because they are brilliant. It's not bothered that fish, is it? Not at all, and that's a small fish. Let's go, hopefully there's some bigger ones out there. But the bait is absolutely still intact. Yeah, we noticed that with the bottom bait's been stripped and it, yeah, winding in for a recast. The yeah. ones with those uh, little bobbin things on, fine. Being so sheltered here, we actually were only using carp rods, 15 pound line, and pretty light leads. Well, some of us were using slightly heavier leads, and some of us had a bit of a problem using a heavy lead on a carp rod. In fact, out of these two rods, you can see a very, very small pike rods. The one on the right, oh my God, it's broken. Now, having had this rod snap on me by putting a lead that's too big for the carp rod on, and heave ho, bang, it went. I put a smaller lead on, and if you think I'm stopping fishing, I'm certainly not. I'm gonna go up on the top of that mound, and I'm gonna whale the life out of it and see how far I can get with half a fishing rod. That's farther than I cast with a whole fishing rod. Well, definitely these pop-up beads seem to be keeping it clear of the crabs, no question of that. Um, there's my worm, as you can see. I've got two worms on there, I'm getting carried away with myself. Down comes a bead, but on the rigs, I forgot to get those little rubber sleeves. 
But what I have doubled up with, and may do, I've got one of these, I don't know if you've seen these bait elastic things, called a bait weaver, I think, so it actually, it's just a, a roll of the bait elastic in there, but it comes out on its own. So what I do is hold it here, I go round a few times, just over itself, pull that little pop-up up a bit, go round the pop-up, 5.3 times, then back over again, and at the back I just make a half hitch, and of course this is a nice tube to be able to slide it through and cinch it off there, just like you were darning, you see, like those net menders. When they mend the fishing nets, you can see why, because it's, I don't know, that's quite a handy little tool, and it's green, I can see it. Not in the dark, obviously. Snap it off, and there, as you can see, I fixed that bead, and I can actually slide that up and down a bit, nice and tight, on the bait like that, ready to cast. So if you haven't got those little valve rubber tubey bits to stop it, that you slide down with your finger now, you can make do, get some bait elastic, and just whip either side of the bead like that. Fish on, on the pop-up again, look. Actually, you can tell, look. Three baitless hooks, and the only one with a, with a pop-up bead, mini bass, baby bass. So it goes to show, doesn't it, that the, the pop-up bead definitely works with these crabs stripping the bottom hook, the top hook. Absolutely. And we made a point of only putting a bead on one of these just to see if it would definitely work, and it has done. And That's they bear the other hooks, aren't they? Other ones are absolutely Absolutely stripped. Stri yep. shredded and stripped. Well, as you can see, I've caught Monsieur Le Crab. Uh, he's actually, as you can see, gone for the bottom hook there, which again, doesn't have the pop-up bead. The top hook doesn't have a pop-up bead, it's been stripped. The one with the pop-up bead, which we've been catching the small bass on, is completely all right. Admittedly, the worm probably needs changing, but it's not been pestered by crabs. So you can see that the rig definitely, definitely works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he got a nice surprise when I uh, struck into that one. But we're, we're very, we're not, we're, we've not got much time left because I need to finish editing a video for you guys. So we've got to get back. Um, but we've got probably about half an hour of light left. So we're going to fish it out and put some smaller baits on and just try and get the numbers of the small bass probably. Now, if it was smooth hound time... That would be on the hook. It'd be straight <laughs> out on the hook. We'd yeah. be putting this out, yeah. Yep. Well, there we go. That's a better sized bass. And again, you can see the pop-up bees working caught on the top the top one this time the top your top hook so pretty high up in the water really but it's working guys gonna get get a smaller bait out there again and just go for the numbers I think now awesome Guys, you know Graham pulling in the last cast. It's now getting dark, but hang on, hang on. They're coming in like whiter now, these little bass. On the bead and on the bead again, or the pop-up. And just joking, this is honestly, we've been really impressed with this. Look at the bottom there. There's a bottom hook stripped by the crabs, and they are the ones with the pop-ups on, the pop-up beads. Two bass, been really impressed with us, haven't we, like this one? Yeah, they are good. They, they definitely are work. Well, they work for bass anyway. I know they're only little ones, don't get yeah. me wrong. But a if big we, one could be swimming along. If we can catch big ones, we'll be catching big ones. But this yeah. is all there is to catch today. As fishing is, you catch what's in front of you. We're getting back, and I think we really do have to have one more cast. 